hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is lena shipwata if you're an old subscriber welcome back and if you're a new subscriber welcome to the channel where we learn together we grow together and we cry together today as per the description below i am going to do a video where <laughs> it's actually very hard for me i'm like pretending like i'm good but i'm not um where i'm going to talk about dealing with grief uh, so and it's also like just one of those motivational videos but i'm going to discuss dealing with grief so yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video <music> first up so i don't even have like a rundown of how i'm going to discuss this or what exactly i i have to say to you guys i'm just gonna speak about my story and what i've done to sort of help me throughout the grieving process and i feel like i'm still going through that grieving process guys i'm filming and it's raining outside so if you guys hear like thunderstorms and stuff ish, i'm sorry guys but i have to put out the content i have to put out the content <laughs> um so yeah uh, <laughs> uh my story the year is 2020 my father died on the 7th of january 2020 so it was even right before uh covid happened covid happened like two three months later and yeah so my father died in january so we did the funeral i think the funeral was around the 11th or the 12th or somewhere around there and then it was now back to reality back to reality everybody's going back to their family and oof if i have to say so many people pulled up for my father's funeral so grateful to all the family and friends that came through that day um so yeah it was now time to go back home to come back to Ventuk as well because we uh, buried him in the north come back to Ventuk. everybody was also just like going uh, going about their lives going to get back to their jobs back to their families etc etc and to a certain extent i had not accepted his death right i did not know that i had not accepted his death i did not know that i was going through a phase so i get back to Ventic and you know what your girl starts doing because i work in entertainment because i work nightlife a lot i am now in the club every single day <laughs> not a weekend you heard me say every single day i'm in the club coming home drunk every single day and i realized only later on that i was sort of trying to suppress feelings i was not trying to uh, acknowledge anything Fe nothing i was not I, I did not i did not i like in my mind i accepted that he's gone and we've moved on right but we had not sure then the full year goes by i i started noticing i was i was now participating in activities that were unlike me i wasn't doing drugs or anything thank god but like the smallest things that damage shit us around toxic people all the time i was i was just not myself and then i think only 2021 probably towards the end did i say to myself okay no 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 it's gotta stop this has to stop um yo i was doing just i was just doing like my messed up stuff i'll get into like relationships in 2020 i was probably like not in, like actual relationships but i was like i had like so many situationships like i didn't mind i would get into one jump out go into another it was just like so bad it was so horrible and then i started realizing that i was looking for like somebody to comfort me like at all times uh and when there was nobody else in the club drinking alcohol so it was one of those times in my life where i was like i looked so polished on the outside but on the inside i was rotten like i was so rotten it was so bad um so my friend asked me if i'm okay and it was one of those times where you when somebody asks you are you okay and you just like start pouring you just start like sobbing <laughs> We just start sobbing so i started sobbing she didn't understand what was going on and then she realized ah this person hasn't healed or hasn't started the, started the healing process so it then it now from from just ignoring you know my feelings and everything and and suppressing my feelings and feeling my feelings up just with like alcohol and stuff i now started um the the, the way i started expressing myself was like oh just be like drunk somewhere and then i would start crying <laughs> it was so weird i'd start crying 
and people would be like why is this girl crying why is one time i cried in pharaohs I'm like, why is this person crying in pharaohs um so that was one of those situations but yeah dealing with grief uh i think i'm at a stage in my life now where i can say i've accepted it i can say i'm working towards every single day um knowing that um i'm okay and it doesn't define me and that i can still tackle so many situations um despite like not having my parent here so if if you have not dealt with grief yet or if you've not dealt with uh, somebody losing somebody uh this you won't be able to relate to this but anybody that has lost somebody close to them will be able to tell you that life rocks you harder after you've lost somebody like especially a parent uh they tell me that a parent and losing a child is more or less the same type of pain but like it's it's so bad it's horrible but you get through it they a lot of people do of course say like yeah it's one of those things where like life goes on oh my gosh there's actually somebody i cut off because she said to me yeah we miss you and you know we don't see you around and i'm like bro like you don't even ask me if i'm okay and she said to me yeah but life goes on bro we can't be ah i said i never i cut her off um it was probably very toxic of me to do that because we could have had the conversation but i was like nope um but yeah pain pain i feel like pain is even like worse the pain is worse once you've lost like a parent and stuff like that um but i now want to skip to the part where i um talk about how i have dealt with it i started talking about it more see when they tell you uh talking helps talking helps absolutely 100 percent. i started talking about it more i started crying more often like without being intoxicated and stuff if i'm trying to feel how i'm trying to feel i will sit down and cry with myself uh cry myself to sleep or whatever next day feel much better and keep it moving and then there's also this thing that i do whenever i do say a prayer or whatever uh and i speak to god i try to speak to my father as well because we're africans and we believe in ancestors and stuff like that I, like basically so i try to speak to him as well and i think my biggest fear because he left in such a painful manner i think my biggest fear or my, my biggest worry actually is is he okay you know so i'm constantly trying to find out like is my, my father is okay and stuff so what i do is I, I i pray a lot about it i pray and i ask god like just make sure that my father is fine and i feel like his death put like a setback in my career in my life in my goals and everything because i now derailed and i was doing like other dumb shit <laughs> um that i think it, it still molded me into who i am today um so yeah i i i ended up i ended up learning how to deal with it um but it's mostly within scripture and prayer and talking about it and having like a great support support system my friends were so great uh, they were there for me through it all uh whenever i felt like oh i miss my dad i'd call a friend and just like talk about it and whatever i have the one one friend that i always call and and talk about situations like that and it really it really helps like i'm sure you've heard about it a lot but like talk about it it helps you a lot pray about it it helps you a lot uh if you cannot go to therapy for it i have not gone to therapy yet um talk about it with your friends and family talk about it with people that make you feel safe like i said i don't have like a um a rundown of how to like tell you guys how to deal with all of this i'm really just you know also just giving my two cents about it but yeah talk about it pray about it uh but i also started doing this new thing because i need my mental health to be like in place and in check i need to be good i started doing this new thing where every month i go through like a one week fasting program so people fast for different reasons i fast for spiritual reasons i think i'm a very spiritual being so i fast like for a week or at least five days minimum five days um in a month where between so i started off by fasting between the hours of 8 a.m and 2 p.m but now i've moved up to between the hours of 8 a.m and 5 p.m uh and it's so hard <laughs> it's very hard but i do it and while i'm fasting 
I pray more, I journal more, I read the scripture more. I, it just helps you not forget that God exists. It helps you um, go for your for your dreams, like or for your goals, like try to achieve your goals much more because you are focused. You're like you're trying to distract yourself from you being hungry. Like you tell yourself, "I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry." let me go and work let me go whether i need to work out whether i need to like just record a video whether i need to go for a gig whatever it is and i'll be there and just focus on that so even when i feel like oh my gosh i'm hungry i'm about to crack read a scripture pray whatever it is just for your mental like for mental health sake also like just to remind yourself that you're alive that you have things to do that you you know so i feel like i also get a lot done within that week in the month um and stuff but i pray for spiritual reasons other people pray for different reasons there's also intermittent fasting where people pray to lose weight i mean fast to lose weight um i've done that before not like or it's not major i don't i don't usually gain like a lot of weight but like the the one kgs or two kgs that i lost was that i needed to lose it for something um but it helped so like prayer fasting journaling um ugh, all of these things that we hear about every single day really work um and then i also in terms of like my goals and stuff like i said when you're going when you're grief grief grieving wow when you're grieving and you're going through this mourning phase it's very hard it's very difficult it's doable but very difficult for you to chase after your goals and so sometimes you feel like i was doing it for this person now i'm like who am i doing it for you know um and for me it was exactly that it was like i'm doing it for my father i need to buy my father a house one day i wanna you get all of that stuff so when you get to a point where you are like this person is no longer here i have goals but will i now be able to attain my goals because my father was one of my biggest cheerleaders do i still have people that are going to cheer me on i now have to learn how to cheer myself on so I started, uh, but I, I've always been this person that used to, I did listen to a lot of like motivational talks and stuff. I still listen to motivational talks. I started listening to motivational talks around that time more. Um, so like some of my motivational speakers, my favorite ones are people like Leslie Brown, um, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Maya Angelou those people like once i listen to those those people speak once i put on my headsets or whatever and i listen to them speak my day is done like i'm happy i'm fueled um and these these are people also like if you're a christian um these are people also guys my sound is about to get bad so i'm going to wrap it up um as fast as possible um these are people that are also like uh into the scripture into prayer and stuff so it aligns they, they 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 do the same thing i do they work in the industry same industry i do so if they could do it they've gone through same experiences that i have they could do it i can definitely do it um i have stories like oprah winfrey had a friend who used to who started youtube as well so um the friend was a writer or something like that so nobody really knew about them nobody really knew their face so he decided let me start a youtube channel as well and in the beginning he had three viewers his mom oprah and another friend he only had three viewers at most because it's youtube at most you'd get he'd get like 10 viewers but like those are random people that probably like um search up whatever it is that he's doing um that he's talking about in uh, whatever topic it is so this was this guy continued despite having like 10 viewers at most 10 views at most he continued uploading his content uploading his content uploading his content until one day um Oprah's friend, it's so no, actually the beginning, the three beginning people that started watching his videos was, was his mom, his friend, and another friend. So two friends and his own mom. He had not met Oprah yet at that point. So then um his friend is Oprah's stylist or something like in that line. Uh and then uh so then Oprah because she has like a full television network, she needed a, a presenter for a new show and she didn't have anybody in mind that suit the character that she was looking for right and she spoke to a friend about it or to a stylist whoever about it and then her friend was like okay but i know somebody 
that he's not well known but i think he suits this character perfectly and i think you will like it check out his youtube videos and just watch a few couple of his videos he's very consistent every week he drops like two or three videos so just watch his videos and just see how he's also evolving and how he gets comfortable in front of the camera every single day so oprah was like i bet let me do it oprah watches this um this guy continues to watch him continues to watch him and then she reaches out and she says you know what so then it started having like 11 videos because oprah was now the 11th video uh, viewer sorry oprah said okay I, I found my presenter i found my presenter and he was going through the toughest time in his life as well so when you are grieving it's it's that's the time that you want to you know put out uh, chase your dreams more put out content more do whatever it is that you do more because that's the time you will um attract more things to yourself because uh, and also just stay out of the mindset of nothing ever works out of, for me stay, stay away from that mindset stay away from the mindset of um i've lost my the only person that was looking out for me now i have nobody no 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 no. you don't have it's not that you don't have nobody just stay focused on your goals and whatever it is that you're doing okay guys it's you guys you guys can hear the rain is obviously taking over my entire video so i'm going to do a part two of this one sometime later on um, after a couple of videos but i just wanted to motivate somebody uh if you're dealing with grief right now and you feel like you don't have like a way forward or whatever um this is my message to you just 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 be there for yourself basically be there for yourself uh if you're a spiritual person pray whatever it is that makes you feel alive do more of that and uh, you'll be okay so that's it ladies and gentlemen thank you for coming to watch thank you for being uh part of the family uh and yeah until next time bye